Here we go. All right, so the numerator does not need to be factored there. You're just going to leave it x minus 2. What is the denominator going to factor into? X plus 2. Good, difference of squares. So x plus 2, x minus 2. Don't cancel until you do the domain or you will, bless you, lose one of your troublemakers. There are two troublemakers in this problem. Who are they? Who are we kicking out of the domain? Well, positive two and negative two, okay? Now you have to go in order. So smallest to biggest, how are we gonna write it? Parenthesis, what? Negative infinity to negative two, parenthesis, Believe it or not, that's the most common mistake I get with this is people bracket those. You're trying to leave them out. They are troublemakers. You're trying to kick them out. All right, union, then what? Negative two to two, union. Now, in theory, if there was a third troublemaker, you would have another union and you just keep unioning things on. We're not doing that right now. Go ahead and close that. Your time to do that was before class. Okay. Now we're going to cancel. So your x minus twos cancel. What's still left in the numerator? Because I know it looks like nothing, but what's still there? Well, yeah, you can't just leave that like blank. Uh, now, because we canceled something, that means we have what? A whole. We, now, this one's kind of tricky because you have a positive 2 and a negative 2. Which one's going to become the whole? Since we positive 2. Good. So that's going to be 2 something, and I'll come back to that. Once you kick the troublemakers out, they can become a whole, or what's the other thing? Good. So if two is the whole, negative two is the vertical asymptote. That's how you can have both a whole and a vertical asymptote, is one troublemaker becomes one of them and one becomes the other. And then again, my suggestion is, as soon as you find something, go put it on your graph. So you're just doing one thing at a time instead of like if you do the whole list of characteristics and then try to build the graph, it's going to feel overwhelming. Now, how do you get the other part of the whole? Plug in two for plug in it's input output. So if you plug in two to this, what do you get? One fourth. So I mean that's not perfect. You end up with a lot of fractions in these. If the, if the problem's a fraction, you're going to have answers that are fractions. That makes sense. So two one fourths would be like, I don't know, about there. As good as you can, put a hole. And did we have the conversation about, bless you, connecting the hole to the rest of the graph? Yeah. Like if you leave it floating out in space, I will tease you a little bit, okay? Um, cool, so we got all of that. Now I would do your horizontal or slant asymptote. This is probably one of the harder characteristics because you have to go back and compare the powers. This is x to the one, this is x to the second. So when the numerator is smaller, do you remember what it is? Now we had a day off and there was a weekend. So if you need to flip back, good. It's going to automatically be zero. And then you can go ahead and dot that in. It's hard to see because it's on the axis. But when the numerator is smaller than the denominator, it's just automatically going to be zero. What is it when they're the same? Like it's a tie. Yeah, like your coefficients. Yeah, cool. All right, now we have a lot of stuff written on here, but it's all invisible. So it'd be cool if we had like an actual point to plot. So that's where I go back and do the intercept. For the x-intercept, you set the whole thing equal to zero because you want it to be something zero. However, what would you do to start solving that? Good, and so you would end up with one equals zero, which doesn't make any sense, so it's none. What else reinforces that it's none? Yeah. Yeah. There's an asymptote on the x-axis. Cool. All right, y-intercept, you're going to plug in 0. So if you plug in 0 for x, 1 half. And again, if the problem is a fraction, you're going to have answers that are fractions. Like, that's not that shouldn't be surprising. Like, oh, we got a fraction. So 0, 1 half would be, you know, right about there, good enough. And then you can connect everything. I realize that there's not much. Okay, but when you have the asymptotes in there, it has to coast along them and you have to go through the like one point that you have and then the whole, like it's gonna have to connect. I think we brought this up last time too, because I think somebody said, what if we want more points? You can always make an X, Y table. That is always allowed. I don't, because I'm not, I don't wanna do more work. But if you're like, hey, I want some more points, make an X, Y table. What if I plug in this? What if I plug in that? 
Um, and you can always get more points if that makes you feel like more confident in your answer. Once you're there, it really doesn't matter what order you do the rest of it in. So I'm just going to do the order it's written on the page. Who is not invited to the range party? Like if you sweep down to a yet yeah, zero and one fourth. All right. So we're going to skip over. Oh, start with negative infinity. We're going to skip over zero because there's an asymptote. And then why one fourth? Why are we skipping over one fourth? There's a whole, like it's literally missing. So you have to skip over that. And then increasing, decreasing, as you read left to right, what's it doing? Decreasing. So increasing none. Do you remember what you copy over? If you can't flip that, good. It's domain because you read left to right. So just whatever it says for domain, copy that. And on a quiz or test, if your domain's wrong, but you copy it over for your increasing or decreasing, I give you credit for that. And then go ahead and set up your limits for your end behavior. And your choices for end behavior, it's either leveling off somewhere or you have a slant asymptote and it's going up or down. So it either levels off at a number, like you'll get a value there, or it's positive or negative infinity. Um, so where is this one leveling off? Yeah, zero. Won't ever touch zero, but it's behavior. That feels like that went kind of okay. Are we like remembering? So practice, practice, practice. That's all we're doing today. All right, let's try another one. You're gonna need to split up the numerator. Actually, I don't know that that factors. Here, don't write this down. I'll see if it does. I actually kind of think it might not. Because how would you have to split up five? What are the only numbers for five? five. Yeah, five and one, it is never going to give you five. So actually, it's just not going to work. So we can't factor anything. So forget it. Who's your troublemaker? There's actually only one. one two. two. And why is it two? Because I didn't give that why question in the one we just did. Yep. You can't divide by zero. And that's what would make the denominator zero. It's a troublemaker. Kick it out. Now, since nothing cancels, like we couldn't factor, so nothing's going to cancel. Um, so what does two become? Is it the whole or the vertical asymptote? Vertical. Good. We're not going to have a whole because nothing canceled. So like one troublemaker can't become both things. The way that you get both is you have two troublemakers and one of them's the whole and the other one's the vertical asymptote. You can't have a whole on an asymptote. That's not a thing. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and dot that in. Again, my recommendation is just do those one at a time. As soon as you find something, go dot it in. And then we're gonna do the other asymptote. So compare the powers. The numerator is squared. The denominator is just x. And if you need to look back, that's fine. Like, so we're practicing. It's going to be our synthetic division. It'll be a slant asymptote. So it's going to go like this. So your troublemaker goes in the little box, which was two. And then you're going to take all your coefficients from the problem. So go ahead and do it. Now, we rem remainder be zero? Not necessarily. We don't use the remainders anyway. So I got a remainder of three, but then just scratch it out. You don't really even need to finish that column if you don't want to. But it's y equals mx plus b. Do you remember that? y equals mx plus b? OK, so you're going to write y equals, and then use your numbers that you got here. It'll be y equals what? Good, 2x minus 1. And then you have to remember how to graph that. Algebra 1 has been a while. It's slow. Cool. You're going to start at negative 1. Here, I'll zoom way in. So you're going to start here at negative 1. Just don't put actual points. It's a dashed line, like it's invisible. And then to do a slope of 2, you're going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. It's like literally what we're doing in Algebra 1 right now. <laughs> It's just instead of making it an actual line, yours is invisible. Oh, 
it, it's like good enough. Remember that it's invisible. Okay, so like good enough. Bless you. Cool. All right, now all that's great, but it's all invisible. So it would be good if we could get some actual points. X intercepts, you would set this whole thing equal to zero. But look, the first thing you're gonna do is multiply over the X minus two, which zero times anything would still be zero. And did this factor? No, so you're not gonna have any. It just won't work. Or if you're like, hey, what if we did complete the square or quadratic formula? You would get answers, but they would be imaginary. Bless you. All right, y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0. So let's see what we get if we plug in 0. If you put in 0 for all these x's, you can actually just cover them up, because if they're 0, they're gone. Um, what do you get if all these x's are 0? Yeah, 5 over negative 2 or negative 5 over 2. Now, you kind of need to know what that is as a decimal if you're going to put it on the graph, though. Um, do you know what 5 divided by 2? 2 and a half. So 0, negative 2 and a half would be like right there. And then I get that that's not a whole lot to go on, but the graph has to go through that point and coast along the asymptotes. So it's going to have to do this. Like, there's not a choice. Those dotted lines are like fences. It's it's fenced in. So I get that there's not a whole lot to go on, but you don't really have a choice for anywhere else it can go. Again, if that bothers you, what did I tell you to do? Oh. Make a table. You can always, what if I plug in one? What if I plug in two? What if I plug in three? It'll take you longer, but if that makes you feel more comfortable to get more points, then you can do that, okay? Now, I didn't ask you increasing, decreasing for this one because it would just get like really weird. Um, and if I'm not going to ask you on like I didn't ask range on this one, there just won't be a blank for it. But we will do the ends. And I did get asked one year, and I thought this was a really valid question. This call, cool. there's arrows everywhere. How do I know which arrows to look at? And I was like, that's valid. Um, so it's called end behavior. If you take up your hand and cover up the middle of the graph, whatever arrows are left are the ends. So look, if I cover up the middle, these are the two ends. Do you see what I'm saying there? Yeah. Um, so your left end is negative infinity and your right end is positive infinity. <laughs> All right, let's do one more together. So you're going to need to factor the numerator, draw your two sets of parentheses. And how would that split up? Yeah, X minus two, X plus one, because you want a negative one in the middle. So hmm, what did not happen then? No. Nothing canceled, no. so there won't be a hole. Who's your troublemaker? Oh, one. one. Okay, so you're going to leave out one. Kick him out. He's causing problems. Making a zero denominator. Can't divide by zero. Boot him out. Is it one because the bottom is Yes, because if you plug in one, one minus one will give you zero, and you're not allowed to divide by zero. If you think about that, like, don't think too hard about it. I don't like, don't hurt yourself. But like, if I asked you to go ahead and divide into six groups, okay, you're already in six groups. If I said do two groups, you could do that. You could divide into two groups. If I said divide yourselves into one group, we are all already one group. If I said make zero groups, you can't unexist. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you can't divide into zero groups. Like, you can't divide by zero. So, what does one become now that you kicked him out? Good. So that's x equals one. We're gonna dot that in. Is this coming back to you guys from last year? Like, no, it feels brand new. You guys are doing great with it. I guess the butterflies worked. We'll do it. I'll get them all hung up.
All right, let's do the other asymptote. What do you guys think? Look at your powers. This one's squared. This one's just x to the first. It's going to be slant. Your troublemaker goes in the little box. That's one. What are your coefficients that you're stealing from there? Good. So go ahead and do the division. It should be quick and easy. Don't even bother with the last column. I mean, you can, but we don't use it. Or does anyone else have to write it to like finish it? Because sometimes I'm like, I'm like, I have to write it, but then I exit out. Now, this is kind of interesting because what do we get here? Zero. Yeah, okay. It's still y equals mx plus b. It would be y equals 1x plus nothing. I wrote out the whole thing, but how else could you say that without all the extras? Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay, so just y equals x if you want to say that. But if you wrote this like in a test situation, perfectly correct. All right, so, so you're going to start at the origin. So start at zero and then do a slope of one, up one over one. Yep, up one over one. What I tell my ninth graders is if you can count to one, you can do it. Or if the slope is three, I'm like, if you can count to three, you're good. Are you making fun of each other's graphs? I'm not grading your art skills. All right. So that's all great. Um, but all this stuff's invisible. So let's get some actual points. For x intercepts, you would set this whole thing equal to zero. And then the first thing you would do is multiply over the x minus one, but that would still just be zero because zero times anything is zero. So you're actually going to get two x intercepts. One for each of those factors. Perfect. All right. So we get two zero and negative one zero. I actually wrote out the word and because the common mistake I get there is people will put a union between them. I don't ever mark it wrong, but that's technically not right. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like you can put a comma between or just nothing, but don't put a, a U. Oh, do you mean like, because sometimes I'll do this. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, but last year, what is there, what is there? I think you're thinking of geometry. That's a geometry thing. You can just put nothing. I don't ever mark it wrong. I don't care. It just shouldn't be a U. All right, so we're going to plot those. Two, zero, and then negative one, zero. All right, and then we need the y-intercept. We're going to plug in zero. So you can plug into the factored one or the original one. It kind of doesn't matter. Sometimes I think it's easier to look at the original one. If you just cover up all the x's, because there's zero, they're gone. You're left with negative two over negative one. So just two, so zero, two. And you're going to connect the dots and just coast along the asymptotes. So here, look at this for a second. I'm going to point to it. You know how the other ones we did that looked like this? It was like inside of this, looked kind of like an hourglass. Do you see how the points ended up kind of outside of it? That's allowed too. It's just going to coast along the outsides of that slant asymptote. It looks kind of like a big old X. Or it's like the wider hourglass. Can you think of the balance? <laughs> And then it really doesn't matter what order you do the rest of the stuff in, because once you have a picture, like you're all good. Um, range is kind of interesting for this one. If you sweep downwards to upwards, what's your range? Everything. You didn't lose anything, which is kind of cool for a graph like this, like with all the dotted lines everywhere. All right, increasing, decreasing. As you read left to right, what's it doing? increasing so decreasing is none increasing you're going to copy the domain and then limits for your end behavior
All right, where is your left end going? If I cover up the middle here, if you cover up the middle, you can see just the ends. Where's the left end going? Yeah, negative infinity, and then the right end is positive infinity. 